Welcome, man. Welcome, all welcome we're all up there, down here, out there, everybody watching right now. Tremendous. Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. It is... You know what? Folks, if you've been watching the TV, you know that it is a solemn, historic day that will forever alter the fabric of American democracy. So, Thursday. <laughs> because this afternoon, the Senate officially opened the impeachment trial of President Donald J. Trump. And I'll tell you all about it... <laughs> ...in tonight's Don and the Giant Impeach. Mouth to mouth resuscitation. I don't know what that means, but I like it. Last night, the House sent a formal procession to present the articles of impeachment to the Senate, kicking off Trump's impeachment trial. Or it would have, but Mitch McConnell declared that the impeachment articles could not be formally delivered until the following day, so House members had to leave a sorry we missed you slip. <laughs> Now they gotta go pick up the impeachment articles at the airport or something like that. <laughs> Today, House managers held a very solemn re-parade over to the Senate. <laughs> and when they arrived in the Senate, there was a high-stakes announcement from the Senate Sergeant-at-Arms. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. All persons are commanded to keep silent on pain of imprisonment. While the House of Representatives is exhibiting to the Senate of the United States articles of impeachment against Donald John Trump, President of the United States. Did you hear that? Silent on pain of imprisonment. Mm. This is the Senate's second harshest punishment after silent but deadly. <laughs> oh then, the Senate summoned Chief Justice Roberts, who made a dramatic entrance led by the Reservoir Dogs. In this case, there were three Mr. Whites. <laughs> the Chief Justice then swore in the Senate jury. Do you solemnly swear that in all things appertaining to the trial of the impeachment of Donald John Trump, President of the United States, now pending, you will do impartial justice according to the Constitution and laws? So help you God. There you have it. Every single senator just swore to be an impartial juror which may come as a surprise to this guy. Uh, I'm not an impartial juror. <laughs> okay. That's, uh... It takes a... It takes a special talent to be a split jury of one. <laughs> then, uh, Representative Adam Schiff read the articles of impeachment into the record, and they were adjourned until Tuesday. It would normally be Monday, but that's a Martin Luther King Day. Impeached at last. Impeached at last. We'll see what happens, but he's impeached at last. Now. Now. Now, for weeks, Republicans have ignored mounting evidence that Trump knew everything that was happening with the Ukraine scheme, and Democrats have been praying for the other shoe to drop. Well, last night, an entire footlocker fell out of the sky. <laughs> Oh, Thanks to Giuliani Associate and man who told the barber, give me the Charlie Brown. <laughs> Lev Parnas. Parnas, you'll remember, is a recently indicted goon who worked with Giuliani to help Trump blackmail Ukraine into investigating Joe Biden. And last night, Parnas gave a bunch of interviews outlining the president's involvement, and they were juicy. So I hope you guys are standing by with that popcorn gif of me. <laughs> First up... Parnas sat down with Rachel Maddow and immediately tossed Trump under Air Force One. What do you think is the main inaccuracy or the main lie that's being told that you feel like you can correct? That the president didn't know what was going on. Uh, president Trump knew exactly what was going on. This is historic. <laughs> it's the first time anyone has ever used the phrase, Trump knew exactly what was going on. <laughs> now... Ooh. Come on, Parnas. 
Parnas called out Trump on all of his lies, like how Trump keeps saying he doesn't know Parnas. In terms of the president and what he has said about you, um, he said about you and Mr. Fruman, Igor Fruman, I don't know those gentlemen, I don't know about them, I don't know what they do. You're saying that was not a true statement from the president. He lied. I mean, we're not friends. I mean, when you say friends, I mean, me and him didn't watch football games together. We didn't eat hot dogs. I mean, he invited me over for hot dogs, but by the time I got there, they were all gone, and... <laughs> so was a large portion of the football. <laughs> Parnas talked to Anderson Cooper, too, and shocked everybody by revealing that before Trump tried to pressure Zelensky into announcing an investigation of Biden, Trump had already put the same screws to Ukraine's previous president, Petro Poroshenko. The first quid quo pro we gave him was when we met with President Poroshenko. If he would uh, make the announcement that he would, they would, he would get uh, Trump would uh, either invite him to the White House or make a statement for him, but basically would start supporting him for, uh, you know, president. So that was the first quid pro quo. Poroshenko can come to the White House or get a meeting with Trump if he announces an investigation. Correct. Oh, that is classic Trump. <laughs> Harass a Ukrainian president and then replace him with a younger, hotter one. Now, Parnas, Parnas made it clear. <laughs> Parnas made it clear that Trump threatened Ukraine and not just their military aid. Mayor Giuliani Rudy told me uh, after, uh, uh, you know, meeting at the president at the White House, he called me. The message was, it wasn't just military aid, it was all aid. Basically, the relationships would be sour, that you would, that we would stop giving him any kind of aid. We're talking all the aid. Military aid, humanitarian aid, lemonade, band-aid, farm aid, milkmaid, Dennis Quaid. <laughs> now, I, 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 Trump insisted that he withheld that aid to fight corruption. But Lev Parna said, nope. It was all about Joe Biden, Hunter Biden. The only thing uh, we cared about, uh, and we were part, we were the team, was to get Zelensky or Poroshenko or somebody to make a press release, an announcement into the Biden investigation. Ding, ding, ding! Gun smoking, oh. fat lady oh. singing, bomb shelled. The only way this could be more damning for Trump is if there was some kind of phone transcript of him demanding investigation of oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Mm -hmm. Now, this was not easy for Parnas to, to, to reveal all of this because he said he had special feelings for Trump. You loved President Trump. You uh, loved him. I mean, he, I mean, I, I, when, when the FBI came to my house uh, uh, to raid him, my wife felt embarrassed because they said I had a shrine to him. I mean, I had pictures all over. I mean, I, I idolized him. I mean, I thought he was the savior. <laughs> yeah. I can understand that. I can understand that, because every time I look at Trump, I say, Jesus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, the president's supporters are already calling Parnas a liar, but here's the thing. He brought the receipts. Tuesday, House Democrats released a huge cache of incriminating documents provided by Parnas. Then they released another one yesterday. Handwritten notes, text messages, voicemails, pictures, calendars. He even has a scrapbook, our Ukraine summer vacay, <laughs> getting colludy with the present Rudy. Now, for most of the past 24 hours, surprisingly, Trump, Trump's been strangely quiet on impeachment. No shouts, uh, no tweets, uh, which was quite alarming. It's like when the kids are playing upstairs, you get used to the screaming. <laughs> but when they get quiet, grab the keys, because we're going to the hospital. <laughs> but this afternoon, the pressure finally got to him, and he blasted off this gem. I just got impeached for making a perfect phone call. I don't... He doesn't... It's not sinking in. He don't get it. It's not it, getting... And Trump's like a dog who just took a crap in your shoe and can't understand why everyone's mad at him. <laughs> but my aim was perfect. I filled the loafer completely. <laughs> Look. Huh. That old dog. You're definitely gelling now. 
<laughs> now, I don't know really what that. I don't know what that means. But Trump also, Trump up to this point hadn't said a word about Lev Parnas, even though Parnas taunted him on TV, saying this. When you were arrested, the president of the United States said uh, he didn't know you. I welcome him to say that even more. Every time he says that, I'll show him another picture. Wow. A new picture. Look at that. He got new pictures. That's bold. A new Holy picture for every denial. Well, today, Donald Trump took him up on that challenge. I don't know Parnas. I don't know him at all. Don't know what he's about. Don't know where he comes from. Know nothing about him. I don't even know who this man is. No, I don't know him. I know nothing about him. I don't know him. I don't believe I've ever spoken to him. I don't believe I've ever spoken to him, but I don't know him. Wow. That's a lot of pictures. I mean, at this point, Lev might as well release a video of the two of them together. Oh, he did? That's footage of Lev Parnas and Trump chatting at Mar-a-Lago. Now, just what? There it is. They got the footage. Pictures don't lie. What are they talking about? It's impossible to say, because for some reason, Lev put Janet Jackson's 1997 hit together again over the whole clip, even though Nasty Boys would have been so much more appropriate. <laughs> My name's not Baby, it's Lev. Mr. Parnas, if you're nasty. <laughs> Up till now, the White House's defense has been clear. Nothing happened, and if it did happen, it was about corruption. And if it wasn't about corruption, it's not a problem, since it's totally legal for the president to withhold aid. Can't have impeachment if he didn't break the law. Well, funny coinky dink. <laughs> Today, the nonpartisan Government Accountability Office released a report saying the Trump administration broke the law in withholding Ukraine aid. So the day the impeachment is delivered, his own government announces that he is guilty. That's like showing up to the custody hearing and your kids yell, Dad, we made your favorite breakfast cocktail. <laughs> and we didn't drown it. Now, mm. here's what the GAO wrote. Faithful execution of the law does not permit the president to substitute his own policy priorities for those that Congress has enacted into law. I'm sorry. No, no. No, no. I'm sorry, you lost me at Faithful. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. Josh